All right, welcome to my video on how to do the A-level physics practical, investigating into how the terminal PD of a battery or cell changes with current, or in other words, EMF and internal resistance prac. So you should know by now that no battery is a perfect conductor, and so we can model the resistance that it has as a little resistor inside of the battery, so a perfect battery with a little resistor inside as well. Then what we need to do is to be able to measure current flowing through the battery, obviously just using an ammeter, and we need to be able to change the current. So we need a load resistance as well. We need to be able to change that, so that's gonna be a variable resistor. We wanna know the PD across the terminals as well. Actually, it doesn't really matter where you put the voltmeter, to be honest, so long as it goes in between the battery and the load resistor. So we can just put it straight across the circuit like that. If this reads six volts, then that means that the terminal PD is six volts, which means that there's six volts available to the circuit, which obviously means that the variable resistor gets those six volts. The equation for EMF and internal resistance is EMF is equal to IR plus IR. In other words, EMF is the total voltage or PD battery supplies. IR is the voltage available to the circuit. And we also know that as terminal PD, because V equals IR, and then IR again, but this is the V lost in the battery itself due to the internal resistance. That's all that that means. It's just total PD equals the PD lost in the battery plus any leftover available to the circuit. So we are going to vary the resistance and we call that the load resistance, the load resistor. And we wanna do that to change the current flowing through the battery. So our independent variable is the current. Our dependent, that's our terminal PD. Controls, well, there's actually not many controls. Because we're varying I and we're varying R, we just need to make sure that we're using the same battery. So the EMF and the internal resistance stay the same. And for that reason, we don't want to take ages to do the experiment. So we can say ensure battery or the cell is not conducting for a long time because otherwise the EMF can actually change. That's what happens. The EMF of batteries do decrease over time. Sources of uncertainty? Well, there's not really any, to be honest. I mean, the only thing you've got is uncertainty in your current and PD. And that's going to be negligible. It's just going to be the resolution of your ammeter and voltmeter. This is an experiment that I wouldn't do any quantitative analysis of uncertainties for. One thing we can say is go for currents below one amp to avoid lots of heating in the battery. That could affect the internal resistance and we don't want the internal resistance to change. So you're going to end up with nice results. You can do repeats. Personally, I don't do repeats. So here's our results table. And we're gonna then plot a graph of current against terminal PD. And uh, we know that's equal to I big R, don't we? And this is the only experiment where we don't actually end up with a proportional relationship. What we find is that if we start at high currents, which is what I recommend doing, and we increase the resistance, and so we end up with, if we increase the resistance, what we find is that the current decreases. This is because as current increases, internal resistance takes bigger share of the EMF, more voltage lost in the battery. What we can then do is extrapolate our line back to a current of zero amps. So we take our line. So when there's no current flowing, that means that no PD, no voltage lost in battery. So we can say that, so theoretically when that's the case, the terminal PD is equal to the EMF. So that gives us the EMF of our battery. There's one more thing that we can do. The gradient of this gives you the internal resistance as well. Of course, because it's going in the negative direction though, it's gonna be minus R. So we can get the EMF and the internal resistance from the graph. Now you can get the EMF of a battery by just putting a voltmeter straight across the terminals of a battery without anything else in the circuit. However, voltmeters, however, even though voltmeters have a really, really high resistance, it's not infinitely high. So technically you're not quite getting the 
So technically you're not quite seeing the EMF, but it basically is the EMF. But doing it this way, that allows us to not only find a very accurate value for the EMF, but also find the internal resistance. And that's it. Nice, easy one. I hope you found that helpful. If you did, please leave a like. If you want to see me doing this in person, then click on the card and it'll take you to the video that I made for Malmesbury Science. And I'll see you guys there.